texting during a video? Oh, no, wait, I... Let's get started. The other side of the wind surrounds a famous filmmaker and the events that transpire wherein he hosts a gathering and screening of his final film before his death. So, it's been several decades. This movie that I've read about for so long that I've looked into for so long because he's one of my favorite filmmakers, Orson Welles. Citizen Kane, Magnificent Ambersons, The Stranger, Lady from Shanghai, Macbeth, Othello, Mr. Arcard, Touch of Evil, The Trial, Chimes at Midnight, The Mortal Story, F for Fake. Don't even get me started on the films he starred in. Ah, the French Champagne has always been celebrated for its excellence. There is a California Champagne by Paul Masson. This was supposed to be his big comeback. And it it kind of is a big comeback. It's cut and put together in such a fascinating way that also kind of uh, showcases where experimentation with film was going at the time. You can you can see that there's influences of the decade that he was in in that movie. But also, I think, if that movie came out, if he was still alive and he was able to put that movie together, put it out to the masses, like, Hollywood would have hated it. Like, people wouldn't understand it. It was too ahead of its time. And it's, it's this fascinating experiment. That's also kind of a document of where Orson Welles was at the time. What he was going through. It's, it's like looking in this person's life and the movie structured and formed in a way where we're seeing the chaos that's unfolding around him. We're seeing somebody that is trying so desperately, so hard to get back with this movie that means something to him, but that the people around him cannot understand what the movie's about. And there's like constant reflections of him being displayed like from Jake Haddonfield, played by the wonderful John Huston, who's who's just magnanimous and bigger than life in this movie. Like he generally is in any movie. I mean, come on. We see a lot of reflections of Wells, like from that character and his perspective when it comes to everything falling apart around him. And also this idea that there is like death coming towards you and like so, and somewhat of an attraction to it. He's he's succumbed to all this chaos that's going on all around his life that everybody's always obsessed with him and everyone is always trying to figure out what his movies really mean and constantly criticize his life and constantly say that they believe they have an idea of what kind of person he is just by analyzing his art and what we see on the surface when that's not even entirely the case. Like I can go on about my idea of what this movie means or my impressions of the movie or even my impressions of Orson Welles as an individual but like he's showcasing that all these people don't necessarily have that idea of who he really is because we constantly try to pick out details and such, like I can try to do right now with The Other Side of the Wind. We're always seeing him from all these different perspectives. This character's always going through these different perspectives, and it's kind of, it's a movie that's like a deconstruction of Wells himself as an individual. I don't think too many people will get into it, but I think if you enjoy art films, or if you just love Orson Welles, or if you just want to dip your toes into Orson Welles, like later Orson Welles, uh, see it, watch it, experience it really. It's like experiencing somebody that is having all these similar thoughts and organizing a film that is a, a dis an introverted display of himself. 
And there's also a documentary that also came out on Netflix that mostly surrounds uh, the making of this movie, and it's called... They'll love me when I'm dead. Uh, I recommend that too. It's by the same guy that made uh, my favorite documentary of the year. I, I highly recommend seeing The Other Side of the Wind. It's a fantastic movie. And as someone who is obsessed with Orson Welles, who has seen like all of his films more than once, who has read about this man, who has watched so many interviews with him, who's had this cling to this individual, who I feel is a larger than life individual artist, filmmaker. I I love the fact that I live in a time where this movie got released. I think that's kind of special. And I think you should all see it too. Yeah, go watch it. Why are you watching me?